Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let your word go forth. Yes, hallelujah. Let your word go forth, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Yes, praise you, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. Oh, bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hello, everyone. I am, I hope all is well. So, you know, the Lord's been speaking a lot about exposure. And there is exposure that is coming to the kingdom of darkness. Exposure that is coming in such a way that right now, there is such a war, such a battle in the spirit realm because the enemy is so afraid of the exposure that's happening even now. And the Lord is leading me to talk about spiritual warfare, okay? But specifically, some of these spirits that work together to torment the people of God, to, you know, depress, oppress, um, downcast, twist up, to totally set back or to attempt to set back the people of God. And I believe that right now, you know, and it could be different for the territory you live in. But I believe right now, Leviathan and the principalities and powers that work with the spirit of Leviathan are raging and just, you know, sending storms and battles because it is a time of crossing over. Because right now, many of the people of God are crossing over into new territory, into new assignments, into the new in some way. And this does not sit well with Satan or his cohorts. And I want to encourage you that some of you have been in this battle with these spirits that I'm going to begin to break down the Lord's going to do it. And, and some of you have been in, you know, a battle with these spirits your entire life. And these spirits that I'm going to let the Lord use me to talk about have, have tried to kill you and have stolen and destroyed and Still, even now that you follow the Lord Jesus Christ, or maybe you're in a place where you're trying to get out and you don't know how because you've been so twisted and tormented with the lies of the devil. And I encourage you above all things to seek out the truth 
And the truth is found in the Bible alone. And the Lord will give us revelations, yes. And um, discernment, yes. But there's no greater truth. The living word, it's active and it's powerful to overcome every stronghold, every bondage, every lie, every twisted, distorted storm of lies that the enemy will send your way. And the Lord just suddenly today brought, you know, um, you know, he said, I want you to do a video on Leviathan, but not just Leviathan because Leviathan rarely works alone. You know, Satan enlists other spirits to work together, right? So, so Leviathan works with the Python spirit and the Jezebel spirit, and even the Rahab spirit, and I'm sure other spirits as well. But I'm going to talk about these four spirits, and I'm going to let the Lord do what he does. Um, because, oh, hallelujah, someone's going to get set free today. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, the book of Job in the Bible, it talks about the spirit or the, the, you know, the, the being of Leviathan. And you think about what Job went through and the challenges and the turmoil and the torment. Job lost everything. He lost his entire family, all his children, all his oxen, all of everything. He lost down to literally God allowed the enemy to attack his physical body and he began to have um sores and and literally was like just in a place of utter torment and even his friends that um you know they maybe tried to comfort him right but they 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 tried in vain per se you know but Job if you read the book um, Job had pride. Job had pride. And it wasn't until he had to sit down in that place of true, you know, I mean, it's almost like you're stripped down to nothing and you, you're left with nothing and you've got to sit there and come to where you face yourself and you say, Oh God, you know, I thought I knew you. Oh God, I thought, you know, um, that I knew, I thought that I knew, you know. And it's this place where God truly humbled Job to where he, he really realized that he didn't know. But at the end, hallelujah. See, many of you are coming to the end of that trial. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, minister to us today. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Many of you are coming to the end of that trial of Job where you've been through, you know, the stripping and you've been through the torment and you've been through the challenges and you didn't necessarily deserve it, but you endured it for the sake of your faith, really, because you still went through these things with full faith that God is good, you know. Job's wife told him, curse God and die. And he didn't. He wouldn't. He couldn't. He refused. Jesus. So, I'm at Job 41 and 8. And it says, lay your hand on him. Remember the battle. Never do it again. Indeed, any hope of overcoming him is false. Shall one not be overwhelmed at the sight of him. No one is so fierce that he would dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand against me? And what, what God is talking about is the spirit of Leviathan. Okay? The spirit of Leviathan is a spirit that you will not be able to overcome in someone else now god will allow you to humble yourself okay god will allow you to overcome this stronghold within yourself should you be repentant right that's the key but you will not be able to win the battle with someone else 
okay? And I want to expose the demons of darkness that have maybe been setting you back, have been pushing you back, have been causing you problems, okay? Leviathan. Oh, Karaviri Sandalara Soti. Number one, Leviathan twists the truth, okay? Leviathan is very, very tormented and, and twists the truth. Leviathan actually is known to be like, you know, partnered up with the python spirit where literally it's what i believe i believe in the supernatural spiritual realm leviathan twists that itself up again around your spine literally twists you up i've seen it manifest where it literally a person can't figure out what is wrong with them, but they have these issues inside their body where they are literally twisted up and tormented by the spirit of Leviathan, by the spirit of Python. And how does it manifest? Twisted truth. Okay, not only will the truth be twisted inside of your head or inside of their head, but they will also twist the truth towards you. They will not speak the truth about you. The truth will be twisted and they will also use the spirit of Jezebel to, to enlist other people. You see, Jezebel had many Enochs. So while she sat down, she enlisted others to do her dirty work. And these spirits will work together to twist the truth, to manipulate the truth, to plant seeds of discord all around you and cause issues and problems and you will see it manifest right there around you where literally it will enlist others to believe lies about you however trust and believe god will reveal the truth to anybody who wants to seek out the truth you have to love the truth you have to be a lover of the truth you have to want to come to the knowledge of the truth and then and only then will you be able to overcome, okay? You will not be able to And literally, right now, as I am doing this video, literally, right now, I have to say this because it's not a coincidence. There are people right outside my car about to fight. Literally, right now. Like, I don't know them, but this... Why? Because the children of pride. Okay, the children of pride. My God. Jesus. The spirit of Leviathan is raging. It's raging right now. And it seeks to destroy the anointing. The spirit of Leviathan does not like the anointing of God. It just doesn't. It hates it. It goes against everything. It's just like Jezebel. And these spirits are working together to stop you from crossing over. Another thing about Leviathan, it talks a lot. The spirit of Leviathan talks a lot. And um, wants to control the conversation. And also, this goes along with Jezebel as well. The spirit of Leviathan is very prideful. You cannot reason with the spirit of Leviathan. And you know, you find yourself in a place where maybe it's someone you really love. Maybe it's someone you really care about. And you try and explain your heart. You try and explain your feelings. You try to reason with them. You try to humbly sit down and have a relationship. You see, but when someone is manipulated by these spirits, they hear everything from a position of pride. So there is no reasoning and even worse, they do not care about you. Make no mistake. These people might love you as much as they possibly can. Okay. But when they are manipulated and controlled by these spirits, they do not care about you in those moments where those spirits manifest. And if you have discernment, you can see it. 
They don't care about what you say. They don't care about what you feel. They don't care about what you think. They will go as far as to mock you. And I'm talking about these spirits, okay? And I want to encourage you. No matter what you may go through, no matter who it is, you've got to forgive. No matter who it is, you have to find a way, you have to find a place where you cry out to the Lord and you forgive them anyway, okay? But I also want to encourage you not to keep dealing with toxicity. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's your grown kids. I don't care if it's your dad. I don't care if it's your husband. If God does not want us to stay in toxic places. And as far as a marriage, that is totally different. I will never tell someone to dissolve a marriage. I could not be that person. I will not give that advice. But I will say, do not stay in toxic relationships. Do not stay at the sake of your life, at the sake of your anointing, at the sake of your peace, because you will just cycle and circle around with these demons and you will go from trauma to trauma because you cannot reason with Leviathan. Leviathan is very stubborn and unrepentant. And this is a huge thing. This is one of the main keys and one of the reasons why you don't see breakthrough with the relationships involving these people who are controlled by these spirits because they are unrepentant. They will not say sorry. They will not feel sorry. In fact, it is really crazy that they will verbally assault you. They will totally demolish your character. They will talk bad to your face or behind your back. They will never say sorry. They will never feel bad about it. And they will want you to just go on with them in this relationship. <laughs> it's crazy. They're so deceived that they will just assume that the next day it's okay. That it's no big deal. They will not be sorry. They will see that they didn't do anything wrong. And even they will still feel like you're at fault. They will still look at it as though you're the one. You caused the trouble. Oh, it's you. Oh, you, you, you. They are very unrepentant. And here's the thing, you can't repent for them. <laughs> There's nothing you can do. They have very hurtful words. And I mean very hurtful words. These spirits will come together and use words that they know, that the enemy knows that will hurt you. Now God will also train you. And I want to encourage you that sometimes God allows us to dance with these things. He allows us to go through these things. He puts us right in the middle of the battle. In a Look about it. Look at Daniel in the lion's den. You know, and he puts us in these places to teach us, to train us, to show us, to give us discernment, to know and to grow and to become more like Christ. Because when you truly are repentant, right? When you truly have a heart after God, it doesn't matter what the devil sends. It doesn't matter who it is. It could be a person that you love with everything you have, but you're still going to be repentant you're still not gonna engage and this is something I want to encourage walk away do not engage with the spiritual demonic forces because you cannot reason with them you never saw Jesus reason or you know Try and argue with a demon, okay? And also, I do not advise you to just lay hands on anyone, you see? Because the Bible is very clear about that. You can lay hands on someone and them not be in a place of repentance to fill up with the Spirit of God. And here come legions, seven other dreadful demons with the other spirit that you cast out. You don't just lay hands on anyone. You know, um, you have to hear from God concerning that thing. Because some people do not want deliverance. And they might think they do. 
They might think they have a relationship with God. They might think they follow God. But you will know them by their fruit. You will know them by their fruit. You will know them by their fruit. And you have to understand the battle we face is a spiritual thing. In 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 the balada kere sote alawate vilaive re sote alawai. Thank you, Jesus. Some of us have been placed in this position to literally brought be brought into families to cast down these demons and these demonic forces in this witchcraft and whatever might be in your family bloodline. Now tell you what you go through it sometimes. And you will be misunderstood by the very people closest to you, the very people you love. But at the same time, you have to have discernment. We have to have discernment. Because just because it's your family doesn't mean you have to deal with their toxicity. That you should keep on going through the cycles and the circle of trauma. And I want to expose the devil today. Because... He does not like the light. He is not of the truth. And people need to know. People need to be aware of what is really going on. But if they don't want the truth, it doesn't matter. If they don't want to know, it makes no difference. If they don't want to see the truth, if they are not seeking the truth out for themselves, you could tell them, you could talk about it, you could try and train them in spiritual warfare for years and years. And trust me, I know. You could love on them, you could humble yourself, you could be everything God wants you to be to them and it's not enough. Why? Because they're unrepentant. Because they have lived so long with the lies that they actually believe them. And still, we must find a way to forgive. But at some point, we must find a way to walk away. And we must not care what anyone says or what anyone thinks or what they might assume that they know because make no mistake, the devil has planted seeds of discord and that's part of what these spirits do to try and destroy your character and who, you know, people uh, 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 look at you and, and think that you are. But praise God that it doesn't matter. Praise God that anyone who can judge off of gossip probably is is a liar himself, right? That's biblical. Anyone who can sit and listen to but I son Dolores Sote is a liar and that's in the book of Proverbs. But I want to to tell you that sometimes these spirits are so conniving and manipulative that the way that they plant discord is in such a strategic and in in gentle and not gentle, gentle's not the word, but just like so undercover that it's just a little bit here and a little bit there and before you know it, well, wow, why is so-and-so treating me that way? Or how come my family doesn't ever reply to me? Or, you know, why doesn't so-and-so, you know, reach back out to me? You know, these things that we, we may go through, but it's the seeds of discord that Jezebel and these other spirits have planted. Jesus. Not only will Leviathan use very hurtful words, but it's like a smoke screen. Job 41 and 19. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Out of his mouth go burning lights. Sparks of fire shoot out. So it's like sudden, sudden, you know, attack. Sudden Sudden just discord, sudden like, rah, you know, just suddenly. Smoke goes out of his nostrils as from a boiling pot and burning rushes. His breath kindles coals and a flame goes out of his mouth. Strength dwells in his neck and sorrow dances before him. And you know, I want to be, I want to expose the enemy not only is it like sudden attacks 
not only does it leave you with a smoke screen of confusion and what did you do and you know what what is it you know but it also leaves the person it's using utterly defeated this person is is so oppressed by the by the spirit of python so depressed under such demonic oppression and depression and this is where we can truly have mercy we can truly give them grace we can truly love them even through these things but again it doesn't mean that we have to allow them to be super close in your life allow them to be in your inner circle allow them you know to know your business because you cannot trust the demonic forces that work within them and they don't understand it they don't see it because they're deceived they have no way um, to see because you will know the truth and the truth will set you free but truth is an everlasting thing and it's always being revealed if you seek it out but you have to seek it out if above all things it's not Jesus he is the truth the life and the way then you find yourself in this place where you will be used by these spirits. You will be manipulated. And the way that these spirits work is the orphan spirit residing in your mental framework. The spirit that says you'll never be good enough. The spirit that says you don't belong. The spirit that says you're just a reject. The spirit that says, you know, you're nobody. The spirit that says you have nobody, you know, but the spirit of adoption will break off all these things. The spirit of adoption will come into your heart and wash away all the lies, all the grief, all the, you know, the confusion that the enemy has brought to you and maybe even through you. Let's be real. It's not just other people that these spirits use. They've used you too. They've used me too. You know, we've had these times where we didn't know we couldn't see, but as we grow in Christ, we begin to know and see the truth and we begin to be set free more and more. But we have to really want it first. And literally these spirits are raging all around me. I've never, I just know that this is an on time word. I just know it is. Now, another spirit, I, I wanna encourage you, this book right here, it's called Defeating water spirits and it's by jennifer leclair okay this book it's got a lot of good stuff in it i'm telling you uh, it's a book that you i've read more than once you know you go through it and it's so useful in overcoming um the demonic forces that are set against us i mean let's face it we're not crazy to think of this this is just biblical these are the things the church needs to be equipped with to know what we're really fighting. We don't dibble and dabble around the enemy. We destroy him. We stomp on his head. We do that with the truth. Hallelujah, Jesus. Another spirit I want to talk about is the spirit of Rahab. In some, we would think of, you know, the prostitute. But no, there's a water spirit that is dragon-like. Okay, the spirit of Rahab is is uh, um, translated into the proud helpers. Okay, this spirit attacks while you are crossing over. Okay, and I believe this is a key, and it's happening right now for many people in the body of Christ. The remnant is crossing over and even the children, the babes who are just sucking on the milk and, you know, those who maybe are just coming in to meet. This is a time for the body of Christ to truly cross over. Hallelujah. And Satan doesn't like it. Satan doesn't want it. And many of us are finding ourselves in this place of being just crushed and perplexed for the glory of God. And yet, we win, we never lose. But this spirit, it's raging and it attacks while you're crossing over or giving birth. Revelation 12 is a very good um, place of this. And it's amazing because it goes right with it because Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Revelation 12, 10. 
you know, he is the accuser of the brethren. And this is a key indicator. And we can also check ourselves where maybe we start to point the finger at someone else. And we, oh, wait, let me stop right there. Let me quit right there. Because oftentimes, nine out of ten, we're being used by Satan to accuse the brethren. And we call it, oh, exposing and this and that. Well, oftentimes it just isn't. It's a place of insecurity. It's a place of woundedness. It's a place that hasn't healed within us. And then the enemy uses it to destroy someone else. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Our father is very gentle. He's very merciful. He's very forgiving. And even though we can expose all these demons and demonic forces, it doesn't separate the fact that the people being used by these spirits... God still loves them. God still died for them. God hung on a cross for those people as well. And in fact, I want to encourage you that as he was on that cross, what did he say? He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And this is a key that will give you the tools and the ability to overcome and to forgive. You will not overcome the obstacles in front of you that Satan has placed if you don't forgive everybody. And not just once and not just what they did in the past, but what if they do it again and again and again and 10 times over and 77 times, seven times. We've got to be a forgiving people, but it does not mean that we keep dealing with toxicity. At some point, you just got to walk away. You got to set up boundaries because it's what God would have you to do. Is it painful? Yes. This is a season of truly walking away, truly letting go. And some might talk about you. Some might misunderstand you. But those who truly seek to know your heart, those who truly love you, those who truly want to walk beside you, they will understand. Everyone who God has placed with you for your next season will be with you, championing you on, championing you on. They will be cheering you on. On. They will not be pointing the finger at you. They will not be trying to pick you apart. They will not be trying to destroy you with their words. Thank you, Jesus. The spirit of Rahab is very proud and very argumentative. It's also something you cannot just overcome. You have to just walk away. The spirit of Rahab is like a voice of strife. It's like a scoffer and it goes with complaining. This is a key indication of the spirit of Rahab. And I used to be that woman. <laughs> and I can admit that. Praise God. Because he makes all things new. He transforms us and we grow. But a, a key indicator of the spirit of Rahab is complaining and just scoffing and just yes and everything is interpreted through pride and this is something that honestly all these spirits we talk about you know the spirit of Jezebel and Python Leviathan Rahab everything it, it, they operate from a place of flesh from a place of pride and everything is interpreted you could say to them well I really feel you know, blah, blah, blah. They say, well, I really, you know, it, it just, it's all about them. Okay. Because it, really what we're talking about, what the world would call narcissistic. Okay. It's what the worldly term for narcissistic is. It's all about them. They don't care about anybody else. Um, but in the terms of biblical speaking, it's biblical. This stuff is in the word of God. It's biblical, but you cannot reason with these spirits. And right now, these spirits are raging. They are literally waging and raging and waging a battle because, oh, Corre Vere Sante Velavare Sonderio, hallelujah, Jesus, in the next six weeks, 
This is the term. This is the time I just heard. In the next six weeks, everything is going to change. Child of God. I see these spirits being downcasted and perplexed and confused because suddenly, oh, hallelujah, God has a suddenly move. God has strategically made sure of a suddenly move and these plans and blueprints are going to come together and totally and utterly destroy and dismay Satan and his cohorts. And all of a sudden, bam, God is going to hit them. And everything that they've been building up, oh hallelujah, everything they've been saying, everything they've been doing, it's going to come to a crash because God's going to expose it with one swift move. Watch and see. Our God is faithful and he reigns. I encourage you, when you feel downcast, bind up the spirit of Python. Begin to stand up and praise God. Begin to go to war against these things. When you feel the need to explain yourself, just don't. When you feel the need to defend yourself, don't bother. It won't work out well because you cannot reason with the spirit of Leviathan and ultimately anyone who misunderstands you doesn't seek to know your heart. Some people are truly committed to misunderstanding you because of the spiritual battles within their own selves. And without having a repentant heart, what will happen? It will get worse. And you think about this. The spirit of Rahab utterly opposes God's ideas for people, cities, and nations. I encourage you to get this book. But I want to tell you one last thing. You know, in the beginning of the Bible, in the beginning of the world, in the beginning of heaven and earth, God made man and woman in his image. In his perfect and holy image, he made us. And he said that it was good. And then the great deceiver came and he deceived them. See, everything is around deception, everything. Everything goes back to you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Jesus, yes, Lord. John 14 and 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. This is Jesus talking. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things. All things that I said to you. He says in 16 and 12, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to, cl to come. He will glorify me for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. And this is the thing, you know, Jesus is saying, I have so much to tell you right now, but you can't bear it all. And this is all of us. See, we're all still journeying into the fullness of the truth. And until we see Jesus face to face, we won't be there all the way. 
But I want to encourage you, if you're on that journey, you know, if God gave it all to you at once, it'd probably kill you. <laughs> and that's just real. But I, I want to... I want to close with the image of God. We're made in the image of God. In the perfect, holy image of our Father. He created us. And then sin came in. And it marred us through deception, through lies, through the great deceiver. Okay? And I, I just think about this. The Bible says... All things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. It goes on to say in the next verse, those he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to his image, to the image of Christ, to be the firstborn of many brethren. So here you have all things are working to the good. We're being conformed to the image of Christ. But what does that take? Is everybody around us being conformed to the image of Christ? No way. No way. It takes repentance. It takes a repentant heart to turn away from the things as God reveals the truth. To turn away from the ways of Satan, the, the deception and the sin and even, you know, the, the pridefulness and the selfishness and all these things. As God reveals them to us so mercifully and gently, because he does, that's how he is, right? But what if we don't have a repentant heart? What if we don't turn away? Whose image are we being conformed to? I would say, if it isn't the image of Christ, it's the image of the devil himself. And I leave you with this thought to warn you, not only for yourself, but for those in your circle, for those you love. Because make no mistake, if the enemy has set out to destroy you, it's not going to be with somebody you don't know. It's not going to be with some far off friend you rarely deal with. No. It's going to be your parents. It's going to be your kids. It's going to be your spouse. It's going to be those that are closest to you. But if they are not in a place of repentance, they are not in a place to listen, to hear, you know, to care, then they are literally being conformed to the image of the devil, which is the image of man, basically. The image of self. The image of the flesh. We were spiritual beings in the Garden of Eden. When sin came in, then flesh came in. Now, if you don't believe me, go read about it. But what I'm saying is revelation, knowledge. And if we are not repenting and being conformed to the image of Christ, we are being conformed to the image of the enemy. And I say that because I love you. And you deserve to be free. And not just free within yourself, but free for those around you. Don't give people access just because they're your blood. Just because you think you should. Jesus was preaching and the disciples said, Hey, you know, uh, Jesus, your mom and your brothers and your sister, they're out there waiting for you. Huh? Jesus said, Huh? Who's my mother and my brother? And my sister, but those who do the will of the Father. But you know, the question is this. Are we all in? Are we all in for Jesus? Or are we just, you know, a little bit here and there? I'll go to church on Sundays. I'll, I'll talk about him maybe a little bit, but I'm going to live how I'm going to live. I'm going to do what I want to do because... Maybe the spiritual warfare won't be so tough for you. But will you reach your destiny? Will you fulfill your calling? Really, it's a choice that you have to make. I can't make it for you or anybody else. But I know for myself that Jesus is worthy of it all. That I will give him everything. That I will fulfill my destiny in his mighty name. By his blood and his spirit alone. It's not in my strength. It's his grace. 
I want to encourage you. He's pouring it out. He's pouring his grace out. He is. But do we receive it? He gives grace to the humble. He resists the proud. You know? But are you all in? You know? I know if it wasn't for Jesus, I'd be dead. I know the enemy tried to kill me since the time I was in the womb. Literally. And so, the show goes on. For God's glory. You know, we're in a place of great triumph for the body of Christ. We are in a place of great triumph for territory and new ground and new endeavors and new relationships and new places. But the old things must pass away. Those doors have got to go. They've got to shut. You've got to be willing to do anything he's asking you to do to go forward. And he's worthy. He's worthy. His plans are the best. There's no plan greater than the plan God has for you. You could never plan better. But understand this. Those you love dearly may not get it. Those you maybe have wanted a relationship with your whole life since you were born. Maybe they won't understand because they're tormented by the demonic forces of this world. But will you still go on? Will you still run forth? Will you level up? Because maybe you can't take them. Maybe they're not meant to go with you. But at the end of your life, when you see Jesus Christ, it'll all be worth it. And I believe that God is so strategic that he has a way of even bringing them to his feet sometimes maybe we're in the way so I just encourage you we're in a battle right now there's some raging and just some rah, you know oppression depression these spirits are raging but it's because of what's coming for the body of Christ there is a place of more a deeper place with God and into the harvest and into your destiny and into the blueprint and the vision over your life. Wherever you might find yourself, God is right there with you. He knows and he understands. He came to earth to live in a body just to know what it's like to suffer, to feel pain, to go through these things. He can understand when maybe no one else can. He will be there when maybe no one else will. And, um, yeah, you know, he's just so good. And so, yeah, I want to expose the kingdom of darkness, but I want to also bring us back to who he is, the great I am, the one, the name above all names, Jesus Christ, because he's amazing. And it's when we focus on him and his plans that we walk forth. We dance in the fire, right? And we will not be consumed. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, there's another in the fire. I love you all. I'm going to end there. I pray this. Bless someone. You know, we go through things to grow through things. We go through things to train and equip ourselves and others. God will equip us through, you know, um, the trials. I'm always praying for you. And I thank you for your prayers. I love you all so much. Praise Jesus.